As always with the beginning of each new month, we'll be looking today at what's new in the latest release of Home Assistant. While there will be a lot of changes in regard to ESP Home, some development in regard to the Voice Assistant or Year of the Voice, no, we will be focusing today on just what's new in the June release of Home Assistant 2024. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As always, brief note, this video has been recorded with the beta release of Home Assistant. If I'm not mistaken, this is beta 2024.6.5. So there may be some changes to the final release, but more or less everything you see here will be present in the upcoming release. With all the updates to the OpenAI and Google AI, this release brings us some additional changes or improvements inside Home Assistant. While still out of box, we are not able to use fully local LLMs in Home Assistant, unless of course you have a beast of machine that can actually process it in near real time, well, we are stuck with the cloud services. One of the things you may have noticed if you've tried to use it is this prompt. If you've tried to use Assist with OpenAI or Google AI, you received response like this. I'm sorry, but I cannot directly control devices not until the June release of 2024. If we check on configuration for the OpenAI, this is the standard prompt that we had previously or up until the June release of Home Assistant. It is ending with the, if the user wants to control device, reject the request and suggest using Home Assistant app. If we now go to our assist, tell him to turn on the kitchen lights, send a command, we will receive prompt that the kitchen lights have been turned off. And also it reminds us to check if we are already subscribed to Birdie Tinker or not. What has changed? While more or less everything here is the same, if we click on Open AI Conversation, we can see that we now have default new prompt. Besides this last line, this is something that I've added for the purpose of this video. What are a couple of differences here? First, we do not have any restriction in terms of control the device. Instead, we have a button. We can either toggle no control or allow to control Home Assistant. Of course, be aware, if you are using this to control your Home Assistant, that means that Home Assistant will also send all the entities that you have to cloud for OpenAI to be able to control it. That way, you are not just exposing your Home Assistant to the cloud services, which unfortunately, one doesn't work with the other, but also you are using the tokens. The more entities or more devices you have, the more tokens will be used. But besides that, we also have recommended model settings. And in the normal world, you shouldn't need to untick this box to play with the other settings. On the other hand, if you want to play and you deselect it, you will have an option to select model, token, and some other settings. If you are using Google AI, you will have even more settings. But remember, currently devs are recommended that you stick with recommended model settings. And if you don't want to spend tokens, or send your data to cloud, select here no control. With no control enabled, if we try to send control to control device, it will tell us that we need to edit AI configuration to allow access to Home Assistant for me to control devices. And by the way, have you checked out Beardy Tinker on YouTube? It's full of great tips. But besides that, there have been some additional improvements to the open AI or smart control of your home. Now you have option also to control media players. But just remember one thing, if you're trying to control it directly from the web interface, for example, here, the device will not know where to play this song. Instead, you have to add area or a specific speaker. So you will need to add area and the speaker where you want to play that media. While we are already on this page, there is also some additional changes to the exposed section or data set or data table with the exposed entities. What's new? New is grouping by domain but also grouping by area. Plus, there is also one additional functionality that has been added not just to this section with the data tables, but also to other section, and that is expand all or collapse all. As you can see, this now works both in this exposed section, but for example, if we go into the entities, we can also collapse all or expand all. And the third change besides the assist, 
where we have areas and domains, these collapse and expand functionality, there is also ability to save filters. How does that work? For example, if you create a filter here, this filter will be applied to this browser, but also this tab. If you open a new tab, you can create a new filter. Even if you go to some other page and then return back, this filter will be still applied. And it will be applied until you either close the browser or restart your computer. But remember, filters can be dependent on the tabs. If you have multiple tabs with the same window, you can have multiple different filters. A lot of us are fighting with the UI. We want to create something really nice, dynamic, but also appealing to not just us, but other family members. One of the things that we may use is HEX front-end component that allows us to hide or show some of the UI elements depending on their state. This has now been introduced into Home Assistant directly. So, for example, if I go onto this screen here, on this page, click on Edit, click on any section here, Visibility, we can add condition. For example, we can create condition that only one of the users will see this one, or that if entity state equals to whatever state, home, not home, unavailable, are known, let's say home, that we want to show this section. If I click save, we can see that the section is missing because the current entity state is not home. If I set it to not home, save, done, we see that the section is visible. I think that this is a really awesome way to further customize your Home Assistant looks and feels by using only internal Home Assistant integrations and components. But that's not all. Actually, we have one new thing that we can do. If we click on Edit, Edit, we now have option to set background. We can either upload the picture or use local or web URL. So, for example, I want to add background here. I select an image, let's say this one, click on save, and now my UI will have that same background. The only problem at this point is that so far, until beta 5, there is no remove image section. We can change the picture, save it, but there is no delete button to delete image if you have uploaded the image. If you are using Matter integration or if you are planning to use Matter integration, Matter has been now updated to the release version 1.3. And I am glad that I guessed correctly. On the day when the 1.3 release or version of the Matter standard has been released, I posted that my guess is that in about a week or 8 days, we will have a new updated version inside Home Assistant. And exactly 8 days after the official release of the standard, Yes, everything was already implemented inside Home Assistant. With the new standard, you of course receive additional functionalities or more devices are supported. Unfortunately, at this point, not a lot of devices support 1.3 release of Matter Standard, but we are good to go. The last big change in Home Assistant is something that was added by the request of the users. And that is the ability to disable expiry of the tokens. If you click on your icon, go to Security, here you will see all the long live access tokens, but also refresh tokens. Now you have ability to block expiry of some of them. Just click on three dots and select disable token expiration. Plus we have some additional but nice additions to this release. First of all, tags are now full blown entities. That means that you can use them inside your automations, scripts or wherever you need to call or get some trigger from the tag itself. While I do not have any example, but blueprints now have ability to create sections inside the blueprint. This will help all the authors that are creating awesome blueprints to divide into sections each of the blueprint and that will also make it easier for the end users to adopt them and also modify them according to their needs. Alarm panels now have default code that is used to deactivate or design the alarm panel. Remember, if you have an alarm panel configuration inside your YAML file, even if you have not added the default code, unless you add this code here, the system will expect default code. So either create and make a new default code or add code arm required equal false. 
plus there are some other noteworthy changes, but for that I suggest that you check out the documentation. There are also some new integrations in this release of Home Assistant. For example, Air Gradient, AP Systems, Azure Data Explorer, EMGW, PIB, Intelligent Storage Acceleration, which is owned by default in Home Assistant, and Monzo, if you are interested to check or track your bank account. UI setup is now available for four new integrations, File, Jewish Calendar, Media Extractor, and the Things Network. And before you do update on your system, check out the backwards incompatible changes, because some of them may have impact on your own installation. I really do hope that you did find this video useful, and if you did, don't forget to click the like button down below. While you are already there, check that you are subscribed, if not, please subscribe so don't miss the future videos and also my streams. Plus, I would really like to hear your comments. What do you think is the good, what do you think is the bad, and what you wish to be finally added to Home Assistant. And before I end up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But also, let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented and shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.